Holy crap, it's been a while since I've heard that noise. Hello, I am the Big Daddy, this is Except for Access, and this is my new truck. You know, the one I was talking about when the last put a video out a while ago. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been a fair while. And um, I should probably talk about that. And if I'm honest with you, I had debated whether or not I should talk about this. I debated whether or not I even wanted to come back to YouTube and start making videos again. Um, but I kind of feel like it's time. Uh, I, I feel ready-ish, <laughs> kinda. So what happened? Well, <laughs> last year I stopped three times for various things that I'd come across. Um, one of which, the lad on the bridge, you know about that one if you've watched my vlogs previously. If not, there was a guy on the bridge, I stopped and I parked under him. Wasn't as impressive as people made it out to be, but basically that, that summarises the whole story. The second incident was, well, it was worse. Um, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm not going to go graphic with these, but just bear in mind, these stories are not nice. But I also think they're quite important to explain, because, yeah, it explains... Well, it, it explains everything. But well, I think it does anyways. I came across a crash on a dual carriageway, and you know a crash has just happened, because people have a look. I can't really explain the look, but if you've ever come across a crash, you just, you just know that look. There's a, people have a look on their faces. It's, I don't know, maybe shell shock or something like that. I, I, ca I can't really fully explain it. Just, it's recognizable. The second you see it, you just know it. I would, I would tell this story at the top of the 66 where the wind is coming in so strong, I can barely hear me. Hopefully that, hopefully you can. Otherwise I'm gonna have to re-record this entire section. So I rolled down my window and I shouted out, is there a first aider there? And it was like, no, 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 no. So I pulled in front of the crash and I went past everything. So there was, there was two trucks um, and there was a, a van that had rolled, um, you know, it, it's, it, it clearly gone over. And so I pulled up in front and I walked down to see the group and I said, who needs medical attention? And one of the guys looks at me and for as long as I live, I'll never forget the look and I, the confusion that I felt when he'd said it. We can't find him. And my first thing was, someone's been ejected from the van. And I was like, right, who, who can't you find? Is the, where, where's the driver? And, and he says, no, the pedestrian. We can't find the pedestrian. Bearing in mind, this is on a dual carriageway and there shouldn't be a pedestrian. There shouldn't be a pedestrian there. It's funny how people react in them sort of situations because I think they kind of, they cling to someone that they think knows what they're doing. Now in this scenario, I, I, if I'm honest with you, I didn't. But I said to them, right, go search for the, the pedestrian. But to be honest, I, I, I didn't think there was one. I, I, the, there was a mistake. Because, because there was a mistake, there can't possibly be a pedestrian there. And I went to go and check on the driver of the van. So I'm checking the van driver over, this old fella. And one of the guys from up the, or well, across the embankment, it was a flat embankment, shouts, I found him. And I look, and he must be 10 meters, like a good 30 foot from the road. And I, 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 I ran over and there's this lad, like early 20s, absolutely covered in blood, absolutely covered in blood. And bear in mind, obviously first day training only goes so far. So I knelt down to him and I'm about to start doing like top to toe checks, obviously like see if he's breathing, stuff like that. And, and he opens his eyes and he looks at me and goes, what's happened? Uh, I, I cannot 
get my head around the fact that not only is he conscious, he's talking to me. And I, I, I just, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm absolutely just, <laughs> I cannot get my head around it. So the story, as far as I understand it, our fellow driving the van is his granddad. And they'd gone through services and got a coffee. And they'd left the coffee on the roof of the van. And a truck driver had flashed and said, you've got your drink on the roof. And for some reason, I don't really get why, but Grandad decided to stop on the dual carriageway in a live lane to, and get the grandson to go around to the other side to go and get the coffee. One driver in the HGV, which was not freighted, got around it. Second one had no chance. It was a fully freighted tipper. He was plowing into that thing. 55 miles an hour, he was gone for it like. As this happened, the lad was down the side of the van. Truck has hit the van, the van has hit the lad and thrown him. The van's rolled multiple times. That, that's how forceful this impact is. Like all of the tools had come out the back of the van. I remember when it stopped, there was a screwdriver and I was like, where's that come from? It came from the van, it had been ejected. The, it, it, the truck had basically like acted like a tin opener and just cut open the back of this van. And as I'm checking this lad over, I realized that the injuries he's got, as far as I can tell, are superficial. The, the, the injuries that he's got are, he has no broken bones, he has, his nose is bust, he has a, a busted lip. Um, I suspected he might have like maybe a concussion or something like that. Obviously I'm not a doctor, I'm just a first aider. I couldn't diagnose that properly, but he seemed a bit out of it. And to me, that was a concussion. It had occurred to me while he was lying there, this is how quick it is. One minute you're having a chat and you're talking and you do something without thinking for just a second and it can be over that quickly. Needless to say, this affected me. Um, this and the bridge incident had both affected me. They'd, they had definitely got to me. Now the third one. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. 2021 was a year for me. Now I am going to try and tell this story, but I might stop uh, because the other two were bad. This one really f***ed me up. Out of respect to family stuff like that, I'm not going to give actual details away of like where these things happened or anything like that. Um, but I'll try and explain because it, it does kind of set it up a little bit. So this was a three lane motorway where the junction coming on added to it. So you've gone from a three to a four and number one is now, or the junction is now lane one as such. If, if you travel the M6 in fairness, you've probably figured out where that one is, but there might be a couple of spots. Now I've just joined the motorway and I've seen that the boards are marked up 40. I thought, well, something's obviously happened. And I see a, a truck in lane four. I won't mention the company, um, but there's a truck in lane four. Uh, it's, it's stationary and I could tell something's not right. And I can't see any police or anything like that. And this has got full beacons on, stuff like that. It's a quarry vehicle, so it's it's very visible. And I just thought, what I might do is I might get over into lane three and check out what's happening. And if I'm needed, I can go into lane four and I can basically create a safe space with beacons on, stuff like that. I saw the driver come around the back of the vehicle and he was on the phone. And again, he had that look to him that just that look went into lane four cut across and um kind of came into lane three beacons on got out and i could see when i looked down the truck there's a car and so what i thought had happened was i thought he'd 
tap the car out. What when I say that, basically, if a truck taps the back wheels of a car, it can basically pivot round and come onto the front of the truck and the truck pushes it down the motorway. It usually happens when cars change lanes at silly points and stuff like that. You'll have seen a video somewhere. If you're into trucking, you'll have seen that video previously. So that's what I went in. Um, I got the driver to sit down. He was absolutely shaking. Just shaking. And so I ran down to the ran down to the front of the car and um, yeah I ran down to the front of the car I looked in and I thought I, I was going to make a joke I was, I was going to say you can't park here because I thought that they would be scared and I thought that you know it's 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 not a nice experience but everyone as far as I'm concerned might have some very light superficial injuries um, in so what happened was so what happened was another truck had hit it hit the um, hit the car and spun it out the, the the truck that hit them tried to avoid it but the car was coming out at a 90 degree angle out of the lane that it was in. He had no chance of avoiding it. And so he basically T-boned this tiny little car, like a Kia Picanto or something like that. It was like a little car. And um, when I looked in the vehicle, uh, the driver was, not, he couldn't speak any English and he was pointing at the woman next to him and um, her head was at a, just the wrong angle. Basically, because it was such a small car, her head had hit the front of the truck. There was hair on the front of the truck, her hair. And um, it hit with such, a, such force, it had snapped her neck. And um, I, remember th I remember looking and just, I, I had no idea what to do. I, I, I got in the truck, I drove it backwards, um, and just to kind of get it off the side of the car, because it was still next to it. And um, there was a Scottish guy in a van. It's a lovely Scottish guy helping me. Um, he had no first aid training, but he stopped. So many people drove past this lad. So many people just drove f***ing past him. I, she couldn't breathe properly. She, her air, airways are closed. And you thought, uh, if someone has a snapped neck, you... The thing is, the thing is with first aid, you taught two things. Firstly, you taught if someone has a snapped neck, you do not move it. Under any circumstances, you do not move it because you can kill them. But she can barely breathe. But you're also taught that you have to clear the airway. So I have two conflicting things. Two things that I do not know what to do. I, I, do I move her neck and clear the airway or do I just leave her and just try to kind of like kind of stabilize her try to kind of make it so her neck, so she's at least and so I got the guy to hold her head and um, the, I got the Scottish guy and I tried I tried giving her top to toe I tried looking after the other driver and I I 
I don't think I've ever felt so out of my depth in my entire life. To the point where I, 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 I had, I, I literally had no idea what to do. I didn't know, I, 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 I literally didn't know what to do. And I've, I've never been so relieved. I mean, obviously I, when, when paramedics turn up, but that, that feeling of relief. Um, yeah, I think because I was running on adrenaline, once, like, we, we were there, we were there for hours. And the, the thing is, when I was there, um, we were, I'll be honest with you, we were cracking jokes. We were, you know, spirits were high and, you know, we were, we were talking with the police and fire brigade and we were kind of, you know, we were chatting away and so like me and the Scottish guy, we, we, we sat and we took pictures. We were sat, <laughs> we were standing behind my truck and obviously there's, there's all this debris and we were just chatting and he kicked this piece of plastic and I remember this this police officer screaming at him oi get over here <laughs> and he looked at me and was like oh crap I've just kicked him <laughs> um, yeah we, we were okay there was no issues eventually we got released and I've been in contact with my boss throughout all of this, my planner, and let them know what's going on. And, and Stephen called me up and he, he just said to me, are you okay? And I, I said to him, no, no, I'm not. And I, I, I just started crying. Just absolutely bawling. And I had to pull up onto the, uh, I had to pull up into this emergency lay-by thing. Uh, and I just said, I'm gonna need a minute there. I, I'm, I'm not doing well there. To cut a long story short, um, it, it f***ed me up. It, it f***ed me up bad. And, but yeah, I uh, I kind of went into a bit of a shutdown mode for a while, and yeah, there's, there's other stuff obviously, but the long and short of it was I, I I wasn't okay. Basically, it's something that was bad. I'm 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 through the worst of it now, <laughs> and I'm doing and I'm doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Okay, I have arrived on the shite. And the intention was, I was gonna do like this cool little montage of me tipping out and stuff like that. And I think the intention of this is going to pick up coal. Um, but I have encountered a slight issue in that shut. Yeah, this is not what I wanted at all. Um, I was, yeah, I was definitely hoping for this to still be open, but it's not. And I'm now in this really, really awkward position where, God, this light's so bright. Um, so this is a motorway, as you can see there. And you can see where I am. I, I don't really know. I guess we're camping here. There's, uh, there are not really a lot I can do, I can't. I mean, there was somewhere back there, there was under this bridge, and a bit further along, there was somewhere I could stop. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I ain't backing up through that. Uh, this, this is where we'll sit tonight. 
thing is, this is like the third odd place that I've slept this week. So this week's practically under a motorway. Last night I slept in the bean factory, uh, which was a bit weird. And the night before that I was in a horse hospital. Apparently it's just a week of sleeping in odd places. I'm assuming it's this way. This is the way the shat nav saying. It says go down here. It might be. <laughs> oh, I'm such a professional. Is it? I mean, it looks like tippers have been down here. You can usually tell when tippers have been down the spot because it, they discolour the road because obviously we're tracking all of the quarry like aggregates and stuff like that out. It's also worth noting that I'm not wearing underpants. I know this is one of these too much information kind of episodes, but um, this morning, <laughs> this morning when I got up, the guy said be up for six. I was up for quarter to five and I was kind of getting dressed and kind of getting all ready and stuff like that. And then I heard a pip and I looked in the mirror, with all the mirror cam, and I saw him right behind the truck. I was like, oh crap. So I very quickly got dressed. Couldn't find a clean set of under underwear, so I just I just put my pants on, and um, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> uh, oh, now this is a quarry vehicle, so this must be right. This has to be right. What's this down here? Next right, all HGV collections and deliveries. Yay! This is right! Oh, good sat nav. Some beacons. And... Uh. HGV temperature testing area. What does that mean? Oh, oh right, for, <laughs> for coronavirus, that makes sense. <laughs> right, stay in your cab, I'll reach you until you reach. Do I have to go in through this? Please turn off engine, remove keys, exit cab. Proceed to the temperature check building via the front of the vehicle. Enter temperature testing building when light is on green and stand in marked area. If temperature is a pass, wait printout and proceed to Weybridge as normal. If a fail, return to cab and wait instructions. Wow, this is so weird. Oh, this is super strange. This is even a little hut and stuff. This is crackers like. Right, I've got to put the PPE on. Please wait for green light. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> oh, wow, right. So, please use what? Alright. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say it's not built for me, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> is that is that enough? <laughs> oh, get a, I get a souvenir, do I? Look at no, look at that. <laughs> do you want to do a, Do you want to do another one? <laughs> Okay, well, that, that, listen, if you're, I don't know if that's a comment towards my, if you think I'm ugly or not, I, I don't know. I, have I been insulted there? Uh, right, do I come down to you now, yeah? Yeah, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm at the limb services at the truck wash, and fuck you. Look at that. Jesus, wet. But 
categorically have to get the truck washed. I mean, again, just to show you outside. Look at that. I think it's the worst I've, I've, I've seen it. It, it. It's bad. It's like real bad. <laughs> One other thing I want to do is thank my sponsor. It's not a sponsored video, this. This actually, they don't even know I'm doing this. Um, the way that sponsorships work with YouTube, usually anyways, is a company will sponsor a, a, a certain number of videos. And when I had taken my, yeah, taken my break from YouTube, um, I still technically owed Zeus one more, one more video, or backhaul.me is it is, is, is on there. And rather than, I explained the situation to them, and I explained what had happened and where I was with my head and stuff like that, and the fact that I, I was, I was not in a good headspace to be making videos. And they were unbelievable. Um, so I, I kind of, I just want to thank everyone at Zeus um, for just being genuinely decent human beings. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so, so much. I also want to thank everyone that sent me messages, um, and the first, especially for them people who I did talk to um, through my not great headspace. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, th thank you to everyone. Um, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all you guys. Um, yeah, it, 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 it meant, meant a lot. Enough of the soppiness. The next video will be on the truck itself, uh, what I think of it, uh, the things I like, the things I don't like. Um, be aware, I'm not gonna slate it. I actually really like the truck. There are some things I don't like, but I'm not gonna slate it. I think the people over there have just seen me recording. <laughs> Hiya. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual jazz, and we shall see you next time.